We'll talk this afternoon about um, a concept, a new concept, which, which tries to, um, which is about building democracy. And in fact, um, oops, <coughs> many of the questions that my predecessor, uh, uh, Peter K Kirsch uh, Schlager, I think, would be solved if we had a much more precise definition of both democracy and human rights. Because if we don't really know what they are precisely, then it's difficult to really understand. And I think uh, um, the more we define our terms, the better we can, we can uh, um, solve problems, we can answer questions. Now, my background is a scientific background. I studied physics and uh, theoretical physics, uh, also anthropology, um, um, evolutionary biology, neurology, so fundamental science to try to understand how things actually work. And I was uh, very frustrated in uh, 2002 when the preparations for the Iraq war, as you know, in the US, um, President Bush basically said, I'm going, to go, I'm going to get rid of Saddam Hussein, no matter what the cost. It, war will be the last resort. If you have any, any, any other idea, please. But nobody came to President Bush, even though it took him two years to try to convince the entire world, even sending his Colin Powell around all the Arab capitals and trying to convince all his allies, Western allies, including France and Germany, to convince them that it would be good, moral, to go to war against Saddam Hussein. And his argument was basically, if you want democracy, Saddam Hussein is a dictator, is a murderer, we have to get rid of him somehow, and if you want democracy for the Iraqi people, then you have to go to war. So democracy equals war. So he set that equation. And unfortunately, everybody around the world, even the people who are anti-war, fundamentally, without even thinking, accepted that equation because nobody came up and said, wait, there is a way of creating democracy in Iraq without war. The question, even the anti-war people were simply talking about, well, whether are there really weapons of mass destruction? Should the UN be able to send inspectors or not and so forth? Details. Details. Fundamentally, the real problem is, of course, the problem of the regime of Iraq and other countries, but in this particular case. So I was pro-democracy, but anti-war. And I was thinking, wait, this is strange. Why do I have to accept war if I'm for democracy? I don't accept it. I don't accept that fundamental equation. So I arbitrarily said, I'm going to assume, I'm going to postulate another equation. Democracy equals democracy. In other words, you can create democracy through democratic means. I had no idea how or anything, but I thought, I'm going to assume that it's possible. And afterwards, when I, once I assumed that, I thought, great, now how to do it? How to actually create democracy through democratic means? And how to do it in this particular case of Iraq? Because that's a real case. It's not theory. It's not ivory tower. He is in power. How to get rid of Saddam Hussein with democratic means? And more specifically, you might say, without an illegal war. Some wars can be legal. But without an illegal war which that war was illegal. The UN even said it. And why was it illegal, by the way? At least thanks to France, which, which really uh, Mr. de Villepin basically um, at the Security Council said no. And that's why other countries were able to actually also have the courage to say no to the United States. Because France had the courage. They were, in a sense, the leader of the loyal opposition to the United States. But if France hadn't done that, that war would have been legal. Now, isn't that amazing? That war would have been legal even we all know that it would have been actually still, even if it was technically legal, you still agree, I assume, that it would have been an unjust and an immoral war, right? You see how legality, illegality has nothing to do with morality in the international sphere. Absolutely nothing. And the only reason why it was actually deemed illegal in this particular case 
was because of the courage of one man, Jacques Chirac, who did not budge. That's the only reason. One man. If for any reason he had somehow maybe been a closer friend of Bush, or I don't know, even though he, likes, he liked the United States, he went to the United States as a student, so it's not like he was not anti-American as such. But if for, for any reason he would have emotionally agreed to the war, then, of course, they would have found a thousand different nice diplomatic legal ways to cover up his approval of the war, and the war would have proceeded as it did, but legally, even though it was still unjust and immoral. So there is something wrong when in the world system, something which affects the lives of millions of people actually depends on, let's say, the arbitrary whim or the mood or the will of one person. In this case, it was President Chirac. And of course, President Bush. And secondly, nobody had an idea how to get rid of war or how, how to actually create democracy without going to war. So being, having a scientific bent, I was thinking, well, we need to have a way, a systematic way, which does not depend on the arbitrary wish of one person. This is wrong. Rule of law is the contrary of rule of men. We don't have the rule of law internationally. We have the rule of men. Nationally we do, yes, but not internationally. It's a cover-up. So-called international law doesn't exist. It's only in English, by the way. It's only the, I don't know why the English are so, English language is so, it's the richest language in terms of vocabulary, but it's a tragedy that we use the term international law. In any other civilized language, we don't use that term. Do you know why, how do we say it in German? Peter, sorry? Recht, not law. Anybody speak French here? How do you say in French? So-called international law. Le droit, exactly, le droit, pas la loi. We make a difference. We know what the difference is. In Italian, anybody know Italian? Diritto. Spanish? Exactly, you notice? In all the key languages, I don't know how they say it in Chinese or something. How did anybody know Chinese or Russian? Polish. What do you say in Polish? <laughs> Which means like droit? Right. Exactly. We should get rid of the idea of law because law, what is it law? What does law mean? You look in the dictionary, you see law. Law is something made by legislature. Simple. There is no legislature but we're brainwashed into believing that somehow this exists. There are treaties, which are contracts. A treaty is a contract, it's a piece of paper. You say, I'm gonna sell you a car for a thousand euro. You sign, I sign, you sign, and we have a contract. It's not a law, it's a contract. That's what so-called international law is internationally. You each have seen a piece of paper, you do this, I do that, and we sign. Exactly like selling a car. But notice that if there's a law, if the Bundestag passes a law here, says you cannot rob a bank in Germany. And Peter says, oh, ICD has money problems. You go over there, you go rob a bank. And then you're stopped by the police. And um, you tell the judge, but your honor, I did not sign that law, which says I cannot rob banks. He says, what the hell are you talking about? We have a law, you have to obey. Even if you're not a German citizen, you have to obey the law. Yes, but in international law, so-called, you know, it is only valid if I actually sign. So why, do, why is it valid? Why do we have national law? Why should I obey national law? I didn't sign it. See, real law is when you don't have to sign it and you still have to obey it. Because there's a, there's a social and political contract between you and the political entity. The rest is just... It's not law, it's, it's in a sense, it's, like a pri it's a private contract. All the international treaties are like private contracts between states. That's what they are. We call it public because they're public entities. But it's the same structure as a private contract. So about democracy. <clears throat> now here I'll just repeat a few things that um, my predecessor said. Democracy itself is a human right. And um, so that you can participate and you can decide your own political destiny. But it is itself, it is a human right. It is also the protector of other human rights. And here I agree also with some of your conclusions. 
Uh, for instance, now many people say, to excuse the fact that some poor country is not democratic, oh well, first food on the table and then democracy. I often ask African people, I say, is your country democratic? Generally, no. Would you like to have more democracy in your country? Yes. Even if the country is poor, it doesn't matter what. You ask Africans, I think it's a very white and semi-racist thing to say, oh, well, the Africans are not really interested, or they're not really able to have democracy because they're poor, blah, 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 blah. It's not true. They, in fact, know that often, in fact, it's, it is because they would have democracy that they would have more food on the table. Because it is a lack of a democracy, which means that the dictator is actually taking a huge share and is preventing the normal people from eating correctly. It's only the elites which say, oh, the Asians and the Africans, we're not, it is not our culture to have democracy. That's bullshit.